Bell Lightbox. We just came out of seeing Blue Ruin, and we're about to go see Stranger by the Lake. But I thought I would show you. I've got an excellent shot of the CN Tower here, so there you go. There it is right there. The mighty CN Tower. Which we've never actually been to, but... I've been there. And there's yet the another TTC streetcar. I'm afraid of heights anyway. And this is King Street, major hub, and this is the light box right here, the Bell Light Box Theater that we just came out of. So, here you go. So Toronto for you. Stranger by the Lake was the talk of Cannes when it premiered uh, there earlier this year in uh, Un Certain Regard. The Croissant, the Croissette, had not uh, seen a film as evocative, hungry, had not seen a film as evocative, absorbing, and frank about male sexuality in a long time, if ever. And uh, Stranger by the Lake was awarded the Queer Palme d'Or and the jury prize for best director. Uh, Noah Cowan, who programmed Stranger by the Lake for TIFF, noted that he was very taken uh, by the film's naturalistic eroticism, structural precision, and invocation of classic film noir tropes. Uh, we're very fortunate to have the star of the film with us today. Please join me in welcoming Pierre de la Donchon. Well, um, <coughs> hi everybody, and uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, the TIFF for uh, welcoming uh, me here, and also Florence Armasson uh, from Unifrance, who made, uh, would make this possible for me. Well, um, there has been a screening yesterday night. It was uh, a great time uh, for me to be able to answer the Q&A after the screening. I hope you enjoyed this screening, and uh, I'll be glad to answer your questions uh, at the end. So I wish you a good training uh, and uh, thank you for everything. Yes. As Pierre mentioned, please do stick around uh, for the Q&A after the screening. I'm sure you'll have much to ask him. Thank you for coming and enjoy Stranger by the Lake. Hello again. <laughs> I have another review for you. Uh, this time it's Stranger by the Lake. Oh, okay. This was a French movie. And the director's name is Alain Giraudy. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Forgive me if I'm not. And uh, one of the main actors who was there at the intro, <coughs> his name is, he was the main actor, sorry. His name is Pierre de Ladonchamp. Oh my god, boy, did he sound good. Anyway, um, okay. So I've told you guys a little bit about this movie before. Um, it was very, uh, con it's a very controversial film. Uh, was, uh, but it also won uh, a film of a uh, certain regard at Cannes. Also got, uh, he also mentioned the guy, uh, intro guy, said that it won the Queer Palm Door. So there you go. Um, so this movie is getting a lot of recognition. Uh, and anyway, it's about a. This movie is about a beach, a gay beach, where guys, you know, just kind of cruise each other, meet up, have random casual sex, and just kind of while away the summer days lying naked in the sun, going for swims, and having sex in the woods. That's basically the premise of the movie, although there was a very nice twist to it, which I really enjoyed. Okay, so to sum it up, I really liked this movie. I liked it a lot. And was some of it because of all the naked, the gorgeous naked men in it? Probably. I probably had something to do with it. Um, there were some beautiful, beautiful men in this movie, not the least of which was the lead actor, Mr. Pierre, and his lover, uh, Michelle. I don't have the name of the actor on hand at the moment, my bad, but I will get it on the info for sure. This guy looked like Mark Spitz. He was a total sex god. He was absolutely gorgeous. Had the handlebar mustache and everything. My god, he was fucking hot. And so was the other guy. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna, how I was gonna feel about this movie because I heard there was a lot, there's a lot of gay sex in it and there is a lot of gay sex, okay? So first thing I have to say is if you're offended by nudity, if you're offended by sex, and I mean frank sex, like full-on sex, it shows everything, leaves nothing to the imagination. It's not, not quite a porno, but close, okay? Because you see pretty much everything. Um, you see guys giving each other oral sex, you see guys, uh, how shall I put this delicately, um, 
reaching their climax, um, you know, and having sex with each other. It's, you know, shows everything. And there's a lot of it. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to, you know, uh, react to that, but I didn't mind. <laughs> I got to tell you, it didn't bother me one bit. As a matter of fact, I found it very erotic, quite a lot of it very erotic, quite a turn on, maybe because I'm a woman, I don't know. Um, but I just found it very, very sexy and hot. This was a very, very sexy movie. It was a lot about, you know, male sexual desire, uh, you know, eroticism. And, you know, one thing about this movie that that really made me think, you know, I have to envy men, you know. I don't know if heterosexual men are like this, but gay men anyway, as far as they're depicted in this movie. These guys, I mean, they're just so matter-of-fact about sex, you know. They'll just come up to somebody, hey, you know, you want to you know, whatever, yeah, okay, let's go, go into the woods, do your thing, come back, okay, see you later, bye, see you tomorrow, whatever, you know, it's just like, no big deal, they just go and do their own thing, and get off, and, you know, no jealousy, no attachments, no, uh, no drama, they just, you know, do what they do, you know, it's all casual, you know, and all that stuff, and I kind of envy that in a way, I mean, I don't think women could, could ever be that, I could never be that casual about sex, but, uh, you know, just, I kind of, I kind of envied that, and I enjoyed seeing that kind of way that some people are, and imagining how it must be, but, uh, anyway, so, okay, so this guy, Pierre, goes to this beach every single day for the summer, I don't know if he's on, I guess he's on vacation, so he ends up, and there's, like, endless times, of, like, there's endless shots of this parking lot by the beach, where like all these cars are just like parked there every day and you see a car driving up and this guy parks in the same spot every time then he goes walking through the woods and goes walking down to the beach and all these guys are you know lying around just you know completely nude on the beach uh... tanning themselves uh... going for swims uh... you know smiling at each other flirting at each other uh... you know starting up you know like little conversations and there's one guy who's like sort of apart from the rest i guess this is the character, the title character of the movie Stranger by the Lake, is this older guy, he's got a big pot belly, he's a big guy, uh, you know, definitely not one of these hot young uh, studs who's, you know, frequents the beach. He's, uh, he's definitely the kind of odd man out. And he's just like, sits apart from everybody, kind of on these rocks every day. And so this guy, Pierre, he's a really, not only is he very hot and cute, but he's also very sweet and friendly, and he's really nice to everybody. And he notices this guy, and goes up to him and, you know, says hello, and so they strike up a friendship, and they chat all the time. There's nothing, there's nothing really sexual between them, there's definitely, like, uh, uh, they definitely relate to each other a lot, and there's, like, a friendship going on, but you know that the younger guy is not attracted to him, the older guy is probably attracted to the younger guy, but it's not mutual, right? And, uh, so, you know, they talk and stuff, and, um, he asked me, you know, well, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, I, I come here every summer. I used to come here with my girlfriend, but we broke up. And so now I'm coming here myself, and it's my vacation. And, and then he goes, well, have you ever, you know, have you ever been with a guy before? And he's like, yeah, but, you know, like I was also always with women. So he kind of, you know, tries to come off as, well, I'm not really gay. Um, I'm just, I just kind of like being here. I'm not hanging out here just to, you know, see all the men. I, I just like the beach or whatever. And anyway, so they, they strike up this friendship. And then this, this sex god shows up, this Mark Spitz looking guy who is just like, whoa. You know, I mean, obviously Pierre sees him and he's like, wow, I gotta have me some of that. So anyway, he, uh, you know, flirts with him one day. And at the time, this Mark Spitz looking guy <laughs> is with some other guy who does not take too kindly to seeing the two of them talking together. You can tell he's jealous. And then he, you know, he goes off with him. And so, um, Pierre, I should stop calling him that because the character's name was Frank in the movie. Frank, you can tell he's like really, you know, down about this. He really likes this guy, wants to be with him. Uh, but anyway, okay, so where the movie turns is, um, okay, so one night it's like sunset, dusk, it's getting dark, and this guy Frank is alone on this hill, and this guy Michel, Mr. Sex God, and his boyfriend are in the water, 
and so he's watching them and at first it looks like they're just kind of frolicking like there's horse play going on in the water like he hears them like yelling and kind of splashing each other but then we see that this guy Michel actually like drowns this guy holds him underwater until he drowns and then he just like leaves the lake and this guy Frank sees all this but even though he has seen all this when the next day when this guy shows up at the beach again uh, Michel and approaches him and starts making out with him and stuff he doesn't let on he's like okay with it he doesn't mind the fact that he just saw this guy drown his old lover and it's okay he, j he just wants this guy so they're like together they have you know sex you know for a few days um, you know it's all just at the beach the guy doesn't want to take him home he says oh, I've got to be discreet uh, you know um, you know I, I have another life uh, this is just what I do when I come here and you know you can tell this guy Frank obviously wants more he wants a real relationship but I'm thinking like you know wow like how, how lonely and how and how desperate must this guy be to see this guy doing this to this other guy and not mention it because he just wants to be with him and <clears throat> so that was kind of weird that was like a, <clears throat> a weird slant to his character <clears throat> so this goes on for a few days and then finally the cops show up because this guy's been missing or whatever and they start dragging the lake looking for this guy and they find his body so this inspector shows up and starts asking questions and like you know okay did you see this guy blah 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 and um so although frank never admits to michelle that he's actually seen him drowning this guy um you know it, it starts getting like he starts questioning him a little bit more like you know how come we, i can't come to your house and you know what are you going to do with me when you're tired of me and stuff like that so anyways i don't want to tell you how it ends in case you see it uh... It might come out i'm not quite sure uh... but you know i really really like this movie uh, and not just because of the beautiful men in it um, <clears throat> i liked it because it had kind of this like film noir slant to it actually it kind of reminded me of <clears throat> you know the famous um, Antonioni movie called Blow Up which was about a, a photographer who witnesses a murder in a park and captures it on film captures it on camera and it reminded me of that because in this movie like there's endless shots of these trees blowing in the wind and I vividly remember that from that film Blow Up where he's in the park and he's seeing this murder and there's like these trees all blowing so I don't know I think maybe the director of this movie was in was inspired or influenced by that movie I've got to read up on it and see but it really rem it harkened back to that movie for me and kind of like like the fact that you know the guy witnessed a murder um, and he's feeling like threatened and scared by it but he doesn't do anything about it because he wants this guy and then <clears throat> this other older guy who you can tell really likes Frank but I guess probably is too afraid to approach him because he's afraid of rejection and uh, yeah so it was really it was really really good I really enjoyed it um, it's definitely not for everybody you know a lot of people you know they're you know if you're offended by you know sex you're you know stay away because there's plenty of it in this movie I'd say I'd say a good quarter to half of this movie probably more closer to half is like just sex like sex scenes and there's actually some of it's really really funny because when these like uh, gay guys are um, off in the bushes having sex or whatever there's this one guy who's like this voyeur type who's constantly coming up while like say there's two guys doing it in the bushes and this one he'll be standing there like uh, let's how how I, how again can I put this delicately? Um, uh, pleasuring himself while these guys are doing it, and they're like, you know, what the hell are you doing? Get out of here! Or, you know, and then the other guy will say, ah, oh, he's not doing any harm. Let him stay or whatever. It was just, <clears throat> I just thought it was kind of funny, and um, yeah, so definitely, you know, different, really different, very daring, very. Um, I found it really, really engrossing. I. Uh, I liked it. Oh no, hang on, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So um, anyway, yeah, I would recommend this movie, but also warn you, like I said, if you're, if you're, um, you know, squeamish about sex or if you're offended by sex and nudity and all that, then this movie is definitely not for you. But if you're the more adventurous type, uh, if you're willing to go there, if you're willing to, uh, you know, um, how shall I say? Um, witness certain things <laughs> then uh, you know I, I think you might enjoy it um, 
I liked it. I, I liked that film noirish as aspect to this movie. It was like a, a sort of like tense undercurrent running through this whole movie. It wasn't just a simple boy meets boy love story or, or sexual obsession kind of story because of this murder underneath it gave it a whole different like twist and a whole different slant to it. So it was really interesting. I was waiting to see what this guy Frank was going to do. If he was going to like ever mention this or what was going to happen. Or if this guy Michelle was going to kill him too when he got tired of him. Um, you know, because he seemed the type. Definitely seemed the, uh, the, uh, had the swagger, had the, uh, you know, he was, he was Mr. Macho Man, Mr., you know, like man killer type uh, in more ways than one. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed Stranger by the Lake. I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I enjoyed it. So I will be back uh, with more reviews. Okay, hope you enjoy this, guys. Bye.